Praise God. Welcome to the Back to Basics Ministries Online Church on this wonderful Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday morning, 2020. And praise God. Uh, Easter actually was a pagan holiday, ladies and gentlemen. The Romans um, persecuted the Jews, but at Easter time, they lighten up on their persecution because they were uh, worshiping along with the, the Greeks and others, the god Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth, that's where the word Easter comes from. They were worshiping the god, the goddess Ashtaroth, who was the wife of Baal, Baal's wife. So Easter began with a worship among the pagans of Baal's wife, Ashtaroth, a sex goddess. And they had all kinds of orgies and all kinds of stuff going on. And so the Romans lightened up on their persecution of the Jews. And the Jews took that time and they came out of their caves and their caverns and underground hideouts. And they were able for about a week or so to uh, walk the streets without persecution, and they celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so they, uh, uh, the, the name Easter and Resurrection Day became uh, 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 compatible. And so, so we really celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. The world knows it as Easter, but in the pagan uh, uh, circles, Easter was a pagan holiday, a pagan holiday, and so we just want to bring that to your attention and let you know why we celebrate the way we do, why we call it Easter. I don't get, I don't get mad if you call it Easter. Uh, praise God. We know what we celebrate. We know who we celebrate. We celebrate the resurrected Jesus Christ. I want to give a shout out to it. So many out there. I see my baby girl out there, Stacy, Stacy Lane from Columbia, Maryland, my youngest daughter. Praise God. Uh, perhaps your siblings will be on a little bit later on. And so we praise God for you, Jean Bratton, Karen, uh, Karen uh, Ryan, and uh, we got Sister Jackie Carter in the chat room. She's taking care of the chat room. I appreciate you, Jackie Carter, and all that you do. And so many others, I know I started calling names, and you mess up when you call names, but praise God, praise God. Everybody give, give, give one another a virtual uh, 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 fist pump. Give everybody a virtual fist pump or virtual elbow. We want to maintain our social distancing. So Jean Bratton, give Karen, Karen Herzog a, a, a fist pump, a virtual fist pump. Ryan, give me a virtual <laughs> high five. Amen. Hey, bro, you go ahead, bro. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We're fellowshipping, ladies and gentlemen. We're fellowshipping. Hey, I saw online today on Facebook this morning a church down in Florida, and what they did, they – took a photo of everybody that belongs to the church, all the members, and they tacked the photo of every member to the seat. And so the preacher's up there preaching, and, and the camera's in the back of the preacher, and you can see all the people in the congregation in their seats uh, by way of their photos. Come on, y'all. I mean, we don't get carried away with this thing. Come on, let's worship God. Let's not worship the church, worship the congregation. People are getting all kind of bent out of shape about not being able to go to church. But you know what? This is a good time to test your faith, the testing of your faith, work of patience, patience, experience, and experience hope. I mean, God wants to know who's on the Lord's side. Who's on the Lord's side? Are you on the church's side or on your, are you on the Lord's side? Some people can't exist without going to church. They got to be there with people. Me, hallelujah. I can worship God just right where I am. Hallelujah. When I woke up this morning and sat up on the bed, I began praising God and worshiping him. Then I read the 91st Psalm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I believe God wants us to get to the place where whether the buildings are open, whether you're allowed to get in your car and travel to your building of assembly, or whether or not, uh, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to really believe Isaiah's report? 
Jesus is Lord. Isaiah prophesied 750 years before Jesus was crucified that he will be crucified, that he is the Messiah. He's coming. He'll be crucified. He will rise from the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, that prophecy had been prophesied by many of the prophets in the Old Testament, Testament hundreds of years before Jesus came, that he, the Messiah, would come and die and rise again from the dead. And so we celebrate today. We celebrate the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise God. We're going to ask you all to mute your phones. Press star six because we are recording. We are recording. Okay. Um, so um, mute your phones with star six. Okay. Uh, Gene Bratton, Dr. Gene Bratton says, don't mean to sound harsh, but a lot of people who are feeling some way about not attending church probably don't show up every Sunday morning anyhow. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's Gene, Br Gene Bratton. Gene, we ain't going to go there, but you know, a lot of folks who are mouthing off now, I wish their church was open. And when their church was open, they weren't going there. Come on, somebody. We know how folks roll. We know, But God said, the true believers will worship him in spirit and in truth. I pray, I pray, I pray that this time of, of social uh, distancing and quarantining and, and, and places, restrictions on travel, and even the closing of many churches, that this will cause people to, to connect with the living, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, not with a building, Ladies and gentlemen, religion stinks. Religion stinks. And we live in a religious society where people have to be in a building on a Sunday at a certain time. And then after they spend their hour or 45 minutes in the building, they go about and do whatever they want to do. But you know what? The coronavirus is saying, oh, no, oh, no, no. Y'all have done it long enough. The coronavirus is saying, you all have done this thing to God long enough. I believe the coronavirus, if the coronavirus could, could speak, Dr. Gene Bratton, the coronavirus would say, hear ye, hear ye. You all have <laughs> played with God long enough. Hear ye, hear ye, ye pastors, you churches, uh, you religious people, you folks who uh, uh, dwell on attending a certain uh, assembly every Sunday morning and you want to get kudos from your friends and relatives, hear ye, hear ye, I've got news for you. I'm here to separate the, 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 the tares from the wheat. The real worshipers are going to push through what I put on you, and they're going to press into God. And I believe that if the coronavirus would speak, it would say, I'm here to let you know that God is not pleased with religion, and it's time, it's time to get real for God. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that if the coronavirus could speak, that's what it would say. Praise God. I want to welcome my son Wes on board. His sister Stacy's on. Lorraine will probably be on also, or she'll get the recording. All my family's here. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for Jackie Carter in the chat window. She had any questions or comments. You know, you'll say, well, Pastor Carter, the coronavirus can't talk. It's talking. It's talking all over this nation. It's talking all over this nation, and it's letting people know, hey, hey, things are going to change. Things are going to change. And so we believe God, uh, that God's got the plan. God can blow this coronavirus out the air, out of people's lives in, in, the moment, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. But, you know, God permits things like this. Read your scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. Read your scriptures. Don't get mad at God. God allowed plagues to come during the Old Testament times, and and uh, on, uh, while Moses was leading the children through it through through the wilderness, God allowed plagues to wipe out a part of the population because they just messed up. They got so puffed up, so big, so proud, they forgot the God who brought them out of Egypt even had. Aaron make a golden calf and said, this is your God. Well, God allowed plagues to wipe a lot of them out. Ladies and gentlemen, plagues have their purpose. Remember the, the herpes plague, the AIDS, HIV, the AIDS, not, not the herpes, the AIDS, HIV plague, the SARS plague, the Ebola plague. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and 
folks so survived the HIV plague, and they went back into practicing sodomy and lesbianism. Look, God is tired of playing with people. And so we come to you today in the name of Jesus, and, 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 and I admonish you, get right with God and do it now. Like we used to sing in the church, this was not an old Easter song, uh, they're on a hill far away, to an old rugged cross. No, no, get right with God, get right with God, and do it now. Uh, I know that's flat, but get right with God, he will show you how. Down at the cross where I saw the light, get right with God, get right, get right with God. God has given us an opportunity to get right with him. God is saying to us through the scriptures daily, every day we wake up and we see, we see uh, from the coronavirus the death toll mounting. And, 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 and many of them who are dying are churchgoers. Many are, dying. many are Christians. Christians will die during plagues. Many of us might have to give our lives during some of these uh, pandemics, epidemics, or whatever comes. But we know, hallelujah, we know that we know that we know that uh, when we die, we have a home uh, not built with hands, eternal in the heaven. You know that, don't you? If you don't know that and you're listening today, you need to get right with God. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord and get right with God. That includes me. I've got to get right with God and stay right with God. Praise God. Let's bring Dr. Jean Bratton on to greet us this morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are all grateful today for Jesus' victory over death. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Um, Pastor Carter, did you want me to do the opening prayer, or is that what you're asking? You know what? You can do that while you're there. I wanted you to greet the people, give a, a word of uh, exhortation or, or a greeting, and then, yes, lead us in prayer. Okay, people of God, amen. Are we ready to get this teaching? They're pretty quiet, Pastor Carter, so I'm going to move forward. They're, they're, with... they're, they're waiting, they're waiting. Okay, I'll... great, great. Lord Jesus Christ, we rejoice and we rejoice continually in your glorious and triumphant victory over death. Because your victory is our victory, Father, and help us to live by it, in it, and for it. And as we move forward in this service this morning, Father God, we ask that you bless our leader and his wife and his entire household, Father God, as we are filled with spirit. And we thank you, Father. We, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise worthy of the King of the universe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Bratton, pastor of Living Water Ministries in Wilmington, Delaware. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to get into some word. I've got a message, and I'm excited about this message. And I um, just, just want to get, get preface the message, just a little bit of uh, 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 just lay some groundwork. You know, so many people are so, I mean, bent out of shape. They don't, people don't know what to do, which way to turn. What shall I do? Uh, another day, what shall I do? This coronavirus, I'm overwhelmed. Well, King David wrote, when my heart is overwhelmed. Then he said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The thing we need to do and ought to do in these times, and we don't have any control over these times, is to go to the rock. Go to the rock of our salvation and stay there and worship him and praise him. Even in Psalm 57 and verse 1, uh, the scripture says, uh, Hide me under the shadow of thy wings until these calamities be passed over. The Bible gives us a scripture in, as to how to deal with hard times, rough times, when we're overwhelmed. When uh, calamities overtake us, when indignities overtake us, hide yourself in Jesus. You know, and, and, and this whole uh, situation is showing a lot of people, people who were dependent on their church being open. I, I see pastors struggling 
uh, trying to uh, do now, do online church. I'm going to be counseling a pastor in a couple of days on how to do an online church. And if you pastors need to know how, not that I'm the best at it, but I've been at it for five years, I can give you some pointers how to keep your church going online, how to avoid being cut off by Facebook and by YouTube. You need to get a copy of my book, The Online Church and the Great Commission, and this will show you what to do and what not to do. I see some of you violating some of the principles, and YouTube's not going to put up with you for too long, or nor is Facebook. So you need to get in touch with me, get my book, get an appointment, uh, walk you through your online church, and, 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 and we can be a blessing to you. Praise God. And I didn't even mention money. Just get in touch with me. We want to build up the body of Christ. We can do this and, and help you to reach people. We want to keep people afloat during these difficult days. And so uh, to preface our service today, some people are overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. But I thank God for the online churches. I thank God for every pastor, every effort, every effort, every preacher, teacher, prophet, apostle, evangelist, singer, all of you who are using uh, uh, online uh, 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 peripheral devices and, and, and uh, stuff so that you can reach people, so that you can keep their attention on Jesus. Now, I know a lot of people are trying to keep their attention on the church. Send your money in. I've seen pastors online. Send your money in. All they're thinking about is that money. We've got to pay the rent. Ain't nobody come to church. We've got to pay the rent. Look here. When this thing is all over, a lot of churches ain't going to be in existence, ladies and gentlemen. God wants worshipers, not church members, not church attenders. But this is the time to turn our hearts to the Lord. Psalm 91. I suggest that you read it first thing in the morning, the last thing at night before you go to bed. Read the whole thing, Psalm 91, and, and, and see what God has to say about your safety, that we're not to be afraid of anything. We're the children of God. We're the children of the Most High God. Jesus got up from the grave. He has, he said, all powers in my hand. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. He said, be not afraid. And so we ought to stop being afraid, and we ought to show the world. We ought to stand up, ladies and gentlemen. We ought to rise up, Ryan Trugler, and tell the whole world, we live for Christ Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. We live for Christ Jesus and for him alone. And so I'm saying all this to let you know that despite all the difficulty we are experiencing, all the things we're seeing, people getting sick, people uh, are running, going off the deep end, people going crazy, there is hope, ladies and gentlemen. There's hope. And we bring a message of hope. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message, my friend. For you, it's a message full of love. Hallelujah. Jesus said it, and I know it's true. Look and live. Look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Here is the subject for today. You might want to write it down and date it. Date it. I'll put the, today's date on it. April 12th. Is the 12th or whatever? And, and... Put today's date on it. A Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Woo! Woo! I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. If I were speaking Ebonics, I'd say I'd be excited. I'd be excited. And 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 somebody might say, Hey, Wes, what's the matter with your dad this morning? He'd be excited. He'd be excited. Yes, I'm excited. A Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. I want to say to you. You husbands uh, who are, are now, you're shut in with your wives. You, you, you can't get in your little pickup truck and, and, and run up and down the street. You can't go fishing. You're shut in with her. And wives, you're shut in with that guy. And, and you're, finding out a whole, you're finding out a whole another story about that guy you married. You, you're shut in. And, 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 and a lot of marriages, man, they can't take this thing. Children. Uh, shut in up, shut up with their families, with their parents. Parents realizing, hey, you know, now I know why I keep getting all these phone calls and these notes from your school. Now I know. 
you're not what you have been pretending to be. I know. And, and, and I'm going to write your teacher a letter and ask your teacher to forgive me for jumping on her the way I did because now I know that the problem is not the teacher, it's my, kid, my kids. So a lot of people are seeing a lot of things. But, ladies and gentlemen, just hold out. Just hold out. Just hold out because God told me to tell you when he gave me this message yesterday, he said, tell the people, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. So I just praise God for this. I'm thankful. I am thankful. I'm thankful for this. Tell the churches, tell the pastors, tell the people, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Tell the husbands, tell the wives, tell the children, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Tell the sick, tell those who, who are afraid of this coronavirus, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Somebody tell the president, a, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Somebody, I'll, he may not listen, but you tell him anyhow. You tell the Congress, a Holy Ghost uh, breakthrough is on the way. If you have been following this formula that, I, that I'm giving you, if you've been following this formula, then you can readily receive and accept the promise of this message today a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. And the formula is this. Number one, you must be born again. Number one, you must be born again. I'm going to give you three points. Number one, you must be born again. If you've been born again by the Spirit of God, I mean, if you really actually, honestly uh, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Savior and Lord, then a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. And uh, uh, if you have not been saved, if you've been attending church and you don't know what you're going to do, I can't go to church, what am I going to do? Get saved. You need to get saved. You need to give your heart to Jesus. You need to put away all that churchy stuff. Stop depending on the church for your, your uh, 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 existence and trust in the Lord. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Join me on Wednesday nights during the month of April as I teach on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, 6.45 p.m., Wednesday nights, two more Wednesdays in, in this month, I think it is, and, and we're talking about how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. You won't ever have to worry about the church. If the church is closed down, if Walmart's closed down, if Ross closed down, if, if the supermarket closes down, if your job closes down, you get filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord will lead you to where to get food, where to get clothing. Uh, he'll lead you to peace. He will take good care of you. Church, uh, the Lord is calling the church these days. He's challenging the church. I believe God is challenging the church. Who's on my side, God is saying? Number two, after you, you must be born again, because you can't get the Holy Ghost unless you're born again. After you're born again, then the second part of this formula is, are you doing 2 Chronicles 7.14? Are you doing 2 Chronicles 7.14? You might want to write that down, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Number one is John 3.16, you must be born again. Number two, Second Chronicles 7.14, that says, if, this is a promise from God, listen to this, listen to this. This is not a promise from your church. It's not a promise from your pastor. It's not a promise from your, your girls' club or your men's club. It's not a promise from your bowling club. It's not a, a promise from your pistol range club. It's a promise from God. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. That's part two of this formula. Number one, you must be born again. Number two, do the if my people thing, the Second Chronicles seven fourteen. There are four things we're to do, and three things God promises He will do. And then the third thing is wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. You can use Isaiah forty thirty one. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
or you can use Psalm 40, 1 through 4. I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He's put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and shall fear and shall trust in the Lord. In a couple of weeks from now, some of your friends, you're going to see them. They're going to see you. They're going to say, girl, what happened to you? Uh, uh, we, we, we thought you were crushed by the coronavirus. We thought uh, 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 you, were crushed. you lost your job, you lost this, and then you can say, but I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I have a relationship with the Lord. I am no longer a churchgoer. I'm born again by the Spirit of God. I've got a relationship with the Lord. He talks with me. He walks with me. I fellowship with him every day from the moment I get up in the morning to the time I go to bed at night. I feel his presence around me. I've been, I've been redeemed. I've, I've got a relation. I'm just not a churchgoer. I've been born again by the Spirit of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when you apply this formula, number one, get born again. Know that you know that you know that you're born again. If you're not born again, then uh, you can give me a call. You send me a text message, uh, an email, and, and I'll keep it private and, 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 and show you how to get born again. Again, and by the way, it ain't going to cost you one penny. I'm not one of those money-grabbing preachers. Well, you send me uh, $20, and I'll send you my blessed born-again plan. Ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. All you got to do is want it, want it, want it. And then if you want it bad enough, you can get it, get it, get it. So the formula is you must be born again. You must humble yourself before the Lord, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Okay? God's not going to fill you with your Holy Spirit if you're still going to uh, keep on drinking that wine. You, you're going to keep on uh, 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 drinking that rot gut old crow, that liquor, four queens or three queens or whatever that stuff is, that rot gut, that stuff in the mayonnaise jar you all are drinking up in Tennessee and North Carolina. Uh, God's not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you uh, can't stop smoking cannabis uh, and you're stripping those cigars and packing those cigars, okay, puffing on those joints. God's not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you still uh, and, and you can't break off having sex with your neighbor or, or you can't break off having sex with, 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 with uh, 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 Jimmy John or Billy, Billy Bob, uh, same sex. God's not going to fill you with, I don't care how much you... Uh, uh, claim you're praising the Lord and you your church is on fire and you play uh, scriptures all the time and, and music coming out of out of uh, your exhaust pipe. Uh, if you're living with a man, you have sex with a man. It's an abomination before God, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, "If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways," God says, "Then I will hear from heaven." I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. And then the, the third part of this formula is wait on the Lord. We've got to wait on the Lord. You can't rush God. You can't hurry God. You, you, I, know, I know some of you say, I wish this coronavirus was all over. I, I want to get back to my job. I want to get back to making money. Uh, my restaurant's losing business or uh, my Uber job is like nobody, I can't pick up any passengers. I need to. I wish this coronavirus were all over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if the coronavirus were to disappear tomorrow, would you be faithful to God? Ladies and gentlemen, if the churches open up again next Sunday, are the churches going to honor God or they're going to keep on building up their fellowship? trying to push that same agenda. These are some hard things we've got to take a look, look at. If, if the coronavirus ends tomorrow and the social uh, distancing and the quarantine ends tomorrow, you're, are you going to love your wife as Christ loved the church? Or are you going to honor your husband uh, and, 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 and give him the respect that he's due? Uh, or, or children, are you going to obey your parents in the Lord? These are some things because if the coronavirus is lifted today, a lot of people are going to go back into, to the same old, same old, do whatever they want to do, go to the church on Sunday, 
and there's, there's something magical happens when they go to church on Sunday. That bad boy gets off their back. They get that monkey off their back. They get that bad boy off their back because there's something about being in church make me feel good, not run on for another seven days. Ladies and gentlemen, God did not intend for life to operate that way. God said in his word, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, Ephesians 5.18. Don't be drunk with wine in which is excess, or don't be high or, or reefer or cannabis, or don't be uh, 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 high off CBD. Uh, don't don't uh, 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 get high off sex with your neighbor. Uh, don't, don't get high off drinking and drugs. No, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a command. It is a command to the church to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God is not going to fill any impure, unclean vessel. If your life, if you're living an abomination, if you're living a lie, if you're hypocritically living and you're a pretender and, and, and you ask God for the Holy Spirit, God is not going to give you the Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor Carter, I, I, I beg to differ. Well, you go ahead and beg to differ. I ain't different with any of you. Uh, but I beg to differ anyhow. Okay, okay, what do you have to say? Well, Pastor Carter, I've seen some ungodly people. In, in some of the churches, and I've seen some of them, I mean, uh, uh, whores and whoremongers and drug dealers. I've seen drug dealers speaking in tongues. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just saw a drug dealer speaking in tongues. That doesn't mean that drug dealer is saved. Well, how can he be, be speaking in tongues unless he is saved? Well, the devil speaks in tongues, and we're going to talk about speaking in tongues in about another week. We're going to nail this thing so that you all get your head right about speaking in tongues because the church has messed up this gift of God, and people have messed it up to the point where people don't want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit because they think it means speaking in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 12, 13, 14 gifts of the Spirit, many gifts of the Spirit, and speaking in tongues is just one of them. And, and uh, speaking in tongues only works when the Holy Spirit speaks through you. Romans 8, 26 through 28 endorses speaking in tongues. Romans 8, 26 through 28 endorses it. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 uh, put the icing on the cake about speaking in tongues. Read the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, after this coronavirus is over, and I'm going to say this, Gene Bratton, I hope you back me up, and I uh, hope you got my back. Uh, give me a, a virtual high five, bing, bing. Uh, uh, after this coronavirus is over, a lot of us are going to have to stop playing dumb. We're just going to have to stop playing dumb. We've got to have to stop, stop playing ignorant because there will be no more excuse for ignorance because God has some of us in isolation and in quarantine. That means we can read our scriptures now. We can read the word of God. We don't have to wait on Reverend so-and-so to give us something flowery, something tickling on Sunday morning. We can read the scriptures for ourselves. And so explore the scriptures. If you want to know about speaking in tongues, study the scriptures about it. And, and let's stop being dumb. Let's stop, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't calling you stupid, but let's stop being stupid about this thing. If tongues work for Paul... It'll work for you. If tongues worked for Peter and James and John, it'll work for you. If tongues work for those whom God said, uh, gave a word to in Ephesians 5.18, it'll work for you. But, ladies and gentlemen, there are other gifts of the Holy Spirit. So why would you shut down the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because you have been ignorantly trained about tongues? Somebody might have been your mama. Hey, your mama might have been wrong. Your daddy might have been wrong. Bishop so-and-so might have been wrong. I've met bishops. They have hundreds of pastors under, under them, and they're just plain ignorant concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So now that we're quarantined, you don't have to depend on what the bishop thinks. Some of you can't do a thing without checking with the bishop. You got a headache. You wake up with a headache. You got to call the bishop. Bishop, I got a headache. What do you think? Should I take Pepto Bismol? Should I take Alka Seltzer? Should I take hot lemon and tea, lemon and, and ginger? Ladies and gentlemen, some of you wake up and you got you you can't even go to the grocery store unless call you you call the bishop on the cell. Bishop, uh, they got uh, 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 they got spaghetti on sale. 
Now, should I get the thin strip or the super thin strip? The super thin, thin strip costs 12 cents less than the thin strip. Bishop, what do you think? Some of you can't make a decision without the bishop. In the poor pastors, y'all are killing pastors. Y'all are killing pastors. Why? Because you don't study the word for yourself. I know it's right, Karen Herzog. I know it's right. I know you're going to laugh on this. Uh, you're killing pastors. Uh, a pastor, uh, I got uh, my nail broke off. Now, should I just file this nail down, or should I trim them all to, you know, be proportionate size with, with the other, other, other four? Uh, what should I do, a uh, bishop, a uh, pastor? Ladies and gentlemen, y'all are killing your pastors with this dumb stuff. And the body of Christ said, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus said, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Uh, now, the, the government said, you, you can't assemble out like you used to. We got a, hey, got some friends up in Philly, Pastor H.L. I ain't going to give his name, but his initials are H.L. He's having church today. He had church last night. Mm -hmm. yep. H.L. 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 Jr. Because H.L. Sr. Yep. lived in California. He died two years ago. H.L. Jr. is having church three services today, defying the law, defying the yep. mayor. There are folks, there are folks, they ain't going to close the churches down. They, money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Ladies and gentlemen, God's coming. And God ain't going to play. God said, obey those who have the rule over you. Obey those in authority. They, they look after your soul. And, 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 some, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we got some folks. We got some folks. And, and, and I'm talking about the African-American community now. There are more people being affected by the coronavirus in the African-American community. And there are a lot of reasons behind that, high blood pressure, diabetes, a whole lot of other stuff. But we've got a whole lot of hard-headed folks in the African-American community. And by the way, those of you who are going to judge me, I am African-American, and I am saying it. My name is Leroy Carter. I'm African-American, and I'm saying this. We have a lot of hard-headed African-Americans. Nobody can tell you anything. And the hardest-headed African-Americans I know are some of you African-American pastors. Nobody can teach you anything. You know it all. You don't know your scripture, but you know it all. It has been said. Boom. Let's move on. You got my back, Gene Bratton. Give me a high five. Bling, bling. Bing, bing. Okay. All right. Stay in attendance. Don't unfriend me. I'm just going to tell her like it. Now, you know somebody's going to take what I just said, and they're going to say, a black pastor denounces African-Americans. Oh, and calls them hard-headed. Well, any African-American knows that what I just said is true. Some of the hardest-headed folks in the world are our own people, and, and we know it, and uh, there's no way of getting around it. But you, you know what? God loves you, and, 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 and God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and God wants to wake some of us up, and he's waking me up. Stop being so, blessed, God, hard-headed and proud and got to have things your way and, and that there is another way because uh, some of you some of you are still operating is my way or the highway ladies and gentlemen that ain't going to get it in the kingdom of God it's Jesus' way edifying Jesus praise God now see I can't come on uh, come on, on, on and, and, and talk about uh, uh, white folks are the hardest headed folks I know because I'm not white but I, I know me, and I know my own people. Well, let's move on. A Holy Ghost, despite all this we've said, if you, if you apply the formula, you must be born again. Get born again. Get born again. Get born again. Ladies, oh, it grieves my heart to think of the number of people. Man, I've had more friends die in the last six months than ever before in my life. I've had more friends die. Well, they're only going to die one time, but they died in the last six months. But in no period of my life have I had as many friends die as I had had in the last six months. And, and, and many of them, ladies and gentlemen, were not saved. They were not born again. Many went to church, but many had no, no, no fruit, no fruit of salvation. Now, I'm not judging. They, some may have been saved, 
But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says they shall know us by our fruits. And why live, oh, okay, my generation, 70, 75 years. Go to church 45 years, 50 years, and still go to hell. There's no, there's no quarantine in hell these days, ladies and gentlemen. Hell, there, there, there is no social distancing in hell. There's no quarantine in hell. Folks are still busting hell wide open because they refuse to accept the gospel. And God has made that gospel so plain, so plain, so plain. And, and, and they're still, and some of you listening today, by recording or live, you're stubborn. You, you think you're going to hold out. You're going to hold out. And you're going to plea bargain. Look, look, Jesus is not uh, Judge Joe Brown. Uh, uh, Jesus is not Judge Judy. Uh, Jesus is not Judge Emily. You, you, look, look, look. When your time comes to die, if you have not been born again, there is no alternative but to go to hell. Jesus is not going to send you to hell. You chose to go to hell because you chose day after day after day to defy the gospel, to look Jesus in his face and say, no, I don't want you. And then when crunch time comes, you start coughing a little bit. Your nose gets stopped up. Your, your teeth start chattering. You get the chills, and you got signs of the coronavirus. Then all of a sudden, you, you expect Jesus to come and heal you, and all your life you've been putting him down, beating him down, and, and, and giving Jesus a real beat down, a, a, a chest of Pennsylvania beat down. <laughs> God is not playing with us. He's very serious. He says, you, he says very, very, verily, verily, I say unto you, Nicodemus, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Okay? And then, uh, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Okay? Okay, someone just came on. Okay, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. For those of you who are listening, for those of you, praise God. God bless you, Sister Gaffney. God bless you, my sister. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen you in a long time. Glad to right. see you there. Praise right. God. So mute your phone, star six, please, and then we continue. Okay? Uh, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is coming, ladies and gentlemen. This coronavirus is not going to last that long. I can't tell you when it's going to end, but I can tell you this. I guarantee you this. God is going to move. Hallelujah, somebody. God is going to move. God is not going to let his people who are called by his name, who humble themselves and who pray and who seek his face and who turn from their wicked ways. God is not going to let the people who do Second Chronicles 7.14, those, those who have been born again, according to John, according to John 3.16, and God's people who, have, who are called by his name, uh, who humble themselves, who pray, who seek his face, and who turn from their wicked ways. God is not going to let a coronavirus destroy you or your household. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not going to let this government fold up and, and, and you be left out in the cold. God is not going to uh, pull down the window shade in heaven and leave you on your own. God is not going to desert you or forsake you. God is not going to dish you uh, like uh, the government may dish you. God is not going to kick you to the curb. Now, look here, ladies and gentlemen. Your church might fold. Come on, somebody. Your church might fold. Your pastor may run uh, to Jamaica. Your pastor may run to California and get a job there. Uh, 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 the church might fold, and the choir might break up. And the deacon board and the trustee board might break up, but God's people who are called by the name of Jesus, who humble themselves, who pray, who seek his face, who study, who, who pray, who seek the word of God, who worship God, and who turn from their wicked ways. You know what? 
God is looking for people who are willing to, who are willing to do that. In fact, the scripture says in Second Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. God is looking right now. God is looking right now. God is looking right now. When I was walking up my path, up my driveway to my mailbox yesterday, the Lord spoke to me and said, I, and I sought for a man among them who would make up the hedge and, and pray for the nation that I would not destroy it. I can't find any. He said, are you willing to stand in the gap for this nation? Make up the hedge and pray? I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, this scripture, Second Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Florence Gaffney, he's in Coatesville. Uh, Gene Bratton, he's in uh, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, Karen Herzog, he's in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Wes Carter, he's in uh, Pennsville, New Jersey. And he's looking. And he's not looking for churchgoers. He's not looking for, for, for uh, 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 divas who uh, are now in front of their video cameras and singing, trying to get out there, get their name out there so they can be recognized. He's not looking for that. He's not looking for uh, uh, a pastor who's going to, uh, for the first time, get in front of a video camera and, 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 and try to be religious and, 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 and read the church announcements. God is not concerned about your church announcements, ladies and gentlemen. God is looking for people who will seek his face, <laughs> who will do his will. I mean, I saw a pastor online yesterday. He spent 30 minutes giving church announcements. That is sickening. That's so pathetic. Mm. That's why you mm. pastors need to get a copy of my book, The Online Church and the Great Commission, to see why God blesses us to have an online church. God wants his word to go forth. You can, e you can email people. The announcements, you can snail mail people the announcements. You can, you can get, get on the website, put your announcements on the website. But why waste God's precious time one half hour and, 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 and Facebook's only going to give you 45 minutes or YouTube will give you 35 minutes. And for 30 minutes, you're talking about church announcements and saying you're offering. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what Prophet Bingo used to do in Philly years ago. That's what uh, Reverend Ike used to do. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what uh, some of these so-called uh, mega church pastors who are no longer, in the, no longer recognized, they used to do that. God wants his word to go forth. God is looking for men and women who are priests of gospel and show men and women in this corrupt age, in this dying generation who are, are concerned about the coronavirus, people who have no hope. God wants us to give them some hope that there's hope for you. If you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ, forget about your church. If church is never open again, I'm saved. If church is never open again, I'm saved. Why? How do I know I'm saved? Because I open my heart to Jesus and I ask him to be my Savior, my Lord, my God, and my King. Because I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ that I believe he was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was uh, tried by Pilate, that he was crucified. The third day he arose from the dead. And he lives forevermore because I've confessed that and I've asked Jesus into my heart. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open uh, the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. So I know that I know that I know that I've been born again by the Spirit. And how do I know? Because I've got the Holy Ghost in me and he's a witness. Do you have a witness inside of you? Well, you can have a witness inside of you. And my message today is a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Not a church breakthrough. Not when are we going to get churches back online. When we're going to uh, uh, be able to go back and sit in our pew, our comfortable pew. Uh, uh, when, when, when's the next choir rehearsal? When's the next deacon meeting? When's the next ecumenical council? No, 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 that is not the issue. The issue is, will you receive the Holy Ghost? 
Will you open your heart and believe and receive the Holy Spirit? And ladies and gentlemen, the question is, will you receive the Holy Spirit just like you received Jesus by faith? I believe in my whole heart that there are a lot of people out there who forget what you used to be like. I know there was a time I couldn't even stand me. I couldn't stand myself, Gene Ratton. Now, I know if I couldn't stand me, you couldn't stand me. A wretch undone, corrupt, pathetic, I mean, just plain putrid, putrid, that's good, putrid. People would look at me, want to throw up. They would want to throw up because my life was such a mess. And I'd look in the mirror, and I'd want to throw up because my life was such a mess. Drugged up, drunked up, sexed up, unclean. Sores on my body, breath stinking, body reeking like garbage, corrupt, corruption. And then I just throw some cologne on and go on back out and keep on doing what I, drinking that rot, got liquor, smoking that stupid dope, talking that crap. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to a place I couldn't even stand me. But you know what? God said, I love you. I love you. Come to me, son. Give your life to me and receive me. Let's make an exchange. You give your life to me, I'll give my life to you. Let me live in you. I'm going to take you and make something beautiful out of your life. God promised me. He said, I'm going to take you and make something beautiful out of your life. But in order for me to do that, you must be born again. You must let me come in and let me do it my way. And, 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 and from this point on, your life no longer belongs to you. It belongs to me. And so I said, yes, Lord, let's make a deal. Because I can't stand me. I can't go on any longer like this. I'm dying. And I know if I die today, I'll break hell wide open. I know it, Lord. I know that I'll live eternally in hell. So save me, Lord. And Jesus came into my life, Lord Jesus, uh, my friends, he came into my life and gave me the gift of eternal life. Now that meant that the next Sunday I couldn't go back to the club. I couldn't go back out running women. I couldn't go back smoking dope. I couldn't go back lying and conniving. Couldn't go back cheating my neighbor. It meant that I was born again. That God had given me, given me a new life. And God also let me know this life no longer belongs to you. It belongs to me. I laid down my life for you so that you can have eternal life. And so for the next couple of years, that's... I lived that way, hearing the voice of Jesus. I studied my scripture. I got into my scripture, studied scripture. Family members outside of my household, relatives, siblings, laugh, laugh at me to scorn. Relatives, cousins, they didn't even want me around. He lost. He went crazy. He lost his mind. Yes, I did go crazy. I lost my mind. But they didn't know that I had the mind of Christ growing in me. Began studying the word of God. When they'd ask me questions, I'd answer them with the word of God. Oh, we don't want to be around him. And for several years, it was like that. None of my family, except for my immediate family, my kids and, 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 and my wife was living at that time. Um, they, they were patient with me. They were growing with me. They were changing along with me. But the outside world, I mean, I mean this, this guy, we don't want to be a lot around him. And then... The Lord told me one day, I've got more for you. I want you to be filled with my spirit because you've been crucified with me. You no longer are in charge of your life. Your life belongs to me, and I've got a plan for you. And, and, and since I have a plan for you, I want you to be filled with my spirit so that my spirit can guide you all the days of your life every day for the rest of your life. So get baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
And one Sunday morning, the Lord told me, I don't want you going to your usual church and sit in your usual place in the pulpit along with the other ministers up there. No. I want you to go over to so-and-so's church, and I want you to get in the prayer line. When, when Pastor so-and-so, his name was, um, I'll think of his name. When the pastor uh, has a prayer line and calls for uh, people to be healed and delivered, and, and you get in the prayer line. And when you get up front in the prayer line, his name is Ho Howard Debro, Pastor Howard Debro from uh, Newark, Delaware. And, and when Pastor Debro, when I got up front, and Pastor Howard was one of my seminary classmates, and I used to laugh at him. We used to laugh at him and tease him because he is Holy Ghost filled. And we, we, and at the seminary I went to, they didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I was one who didn't believe in it. But when I got in the line, I said, Pastor, the Lord told me to come here and to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And he smiled. And he said, I'm going to lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. And when I lay hands on you, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, he laid hands on me and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I began praying in tongues and praising God and rejoicing in God and being dancing. And they tell me that the whole church went off. I mean, people began praising God and for about 45 minutes nonstop in that little church. 45 minutes nonstop, people are just dancing in the church, just praising God, just worshiping God, just honoring God. And God told me to tell you today, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is coming your way. A Holy Ghost breakthrough is coming your way. Now, the Holy Ghost may not break through in your life like he did in mine. He knows what you need, and he knows how to manifest himself. But my point is today is to tell you God has promised you a Holy Ghost breakthrough. Now, you don't have to succumb to the coronavirus. You don't have to succumb to being unemployed. You don't have to succumb while waiting on a government release check. You don't have to succumb to the lies that are coming out of the White House and the duplicity and the deception that's coming from this government. You don't have to succumb uh, to uh, being shut off from people. You're not going to starve to death. God said he's got plenty for you, but he wants to live inside of you. And then for those of you who have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you go back and read the scripture, Ephesians 5.18. The scripture says, and be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you study that scripture in the original Greek language, be filled means it's in the aorist tense, A-O-R-I-S-T. We don't have the aorist tense in the English. So we don't have a, an aorist translation that's good enough. But aorist means continuously be filled. And be not drunk with wine, but continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit. Or be being filled with the Holy Spirit. That it's a daily thing. Because we don't belong to ourselves. I don't own the me anymore. I belong to Jesus. Ever since July 20th, 1969, I have belonged to Jesus. He bought me with a price. 51 years ago, he bought me with a price. And so whatever he tells me to do, I do. Wherever he sends me, I go. I've not always obeyed him. But there is nothing he's called me to do that he's not willing, he has not been willing to pull it off because he's got power. He says, greater are, is he in you than he that's in the world. So I want, I want you to wake up, church. The church is not the building. If we never go back to the building, the church is in us, you and me. Can slap me high five, Gene Redden. Bing. Amen. The church is in you and me. Yes. The church is in you and me. Wherever two of us are gathered in his name, we are the church. The Holy Spirit lives inside of every believer. The moment you receive Jesus as Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. But the Lord is now saying, now be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, 
that bad attitude you have, you know, that nasty way you talk to certain people, that's got to go. Because Jesus doesn't talk to people that way. Uh, 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 when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the way you answer reporters in a press conference and they ask you a question, uh, you don't denounce them and, 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 and tell them they're stupid. And that was a dumb question, a nasty question. Because right. Jesus, Jesus does not answer that way. Uh, 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 when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have compassion when, when someone else's child is sick or a husband loses his job or, 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 or the mother is diagnosed with breast cancer. You have compassion. And, 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 and when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you take the half of the pot of greens that you've cooked and half of the chicken that you've fried and you take it over to your neighbor and you give them a dinner because they don't have a meal. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it is no longer me, 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 and my, 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 but it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the Lord is telling me to tell you, and I believe this with all my heart, a Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. A Holy Ghost breakthrough is on the way. Now, back in the old days, the old saints would hear something like that, and somebody would break out singing, There's a bright side somewhere. Oh, there's a bright side somewhere. Don't you rest until you find it. That's what the old saints would do. But I just want to tell you, hold on. Keep the faith that if you have been born again, and that you're doing what Second Chronicles 7.14 says, humbling yourself. You're praying. You're seeking God's face. You're turning from your wicked ways. And if you're waiting on the Lord, you're a candidate for a Holy Ghost breakthrough. America can be a candidate for a Holy Ghost breakthrough. Jamaica, Kenya, the nations. God wants to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Israel is waiting. Nations are waiting. And you know what? I believe a lot of nations are waiting on America to repent. A lot of nations in the world are waiting on the American people to repent of their sins. And when that repentance comes, you watch God break through. Whoosh. He's going to come to your house. He's going to come to my house. He's going to come to the neighbor's house. He's going to uh, go down to City Hall. He's going to go down to First Baptist, Second Pentecostal. He's going to sweep through this land. He's going to sweep through Washington, D.C. He's going to sweep up into Canada, down into Mexico, Central America, Latin America. He's going to go across the waters into Europe, into Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, you watch. He's going to go across the ocean to Africa. The Holy Spirit, God, is going to do something wonderful. In the meantime, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Wait on the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. When your heart is overwhelmed, run to the rock. That's Jesus. When you're, when you're overwhelmed, hide, ask God to hide you under the shadow of his wings, Psalm 57, 1. When your soul is cast down, as in Psalm 43, 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Believe in God, trust in the Lord. When, when you, you feel like you've lost all your strength and energy, wait on the Lord. God is our refuge and our strength, Psalm 46, 1. And when you're afraid, just do what David did in Psalm 56.3 as he wrote, When I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. It won't be long, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit is going to flood us. God's got to. God's got to flood us. He has got to flood us with this Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, when, when God breaks this yoke, when God's people who are called by his name humble ourselves and, and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, when God's people, the church, do this, 
Then God says, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. He's going to pour out his spirit. And as we celebrate Easter, we see Jesus rising from the dead. Death could not keep him. The grave could not hold him. And Satan knew, Satan knew, Satan knew that he should never have messed with Jesus. And, and after that, the Lord told his disciples, wait, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry, wait for the promise. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And I say to you, ask God for the Holy Spirit. He will give you the Holy Spirit so that you can worship him and live successfully the way he wants you to. This is Pastor Carter. I praise God for this message. I praise God for you listening. I praise God for you tuning in. I praise God we've got a whole lot of new time, first time uh, members, uh, not members, but uh, visitors. And we do this every Sunday morning. Uh, we start at quarter to 11, quarter to 11. And um, we thank God that this, this, this is a place where you can come and hear the word of God and get the word of God. And, and, and the Word of God will sustain you. And by the way, these messages are recorded. You can send me an email message, or you can go on my Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, on my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. This message appears on, 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 that, uh, face, on that website page, or you can text me or call me, 404-205-1101. We will send this message to you. We email, email it to you. God wants you to be in the know. And then when the church is open up again, go back to your church. Go back to your church. Go back fired up, charged up, on fire for Jesus, and, 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 and help other people to be delivered. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up your holy name. We give you the praise. We glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for uh, raising yourself from the dead. Thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to us. Praise God. Lord, keep us, we pray. Lord, I pray now that you're healed. Anybody who's under the sound of my voice who may be sick, we bind the spirit of sickness, infirmity, and disease by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command that you be healed now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. Amen. We thank you, Father. Amen. We're going to end the recording, but I do want you to take a little bit of time. Uh, I, I, I'd love to answer you.